So welcome today to the Python and Oracle Database Office Hours for February 2019. Thank you for coming along. Uh, we have on the call today myself, Christopher Jones. I'm a product manager in the database access group. And so I do a lot of the inbound and outbound kind of work, liaising with customers and helping with doc and specifications and jolling along the developers. Anthony Tuaninga, who's online, is the creator and maintainer of the CX Oracle extension and expert of all things drivers and of the data access APIs. Blaine Carter is an evangelist. Now, he's at a conference, so he's not with us today, but he's an evangelist in this area. And so you'll see these three names around a fair bit. So we have a kind of brief session today. Um, just wanted to speak a little bit about the wider topic areas that our group looks after, and that is this open source or the, the scripting language driver area. And you can see on the top left there, this is a kind of stack diagram of Python CX Oracle, a driver that you know and love. That calls down to a layer beneath it, an uh, uh, open source abstraction layer called ODPIC, which you can get from GitHub. It's included, you probably don't even know that you're using it when you're using Python. And that itself calls down into the Oracle C API, the, the proprietary interface C API, which then talks across to the database using the Oracle network. So a number of other drivers also use that ODPIC layer. Um, and sometimes you might see uh, in the release notes for Python that we might say that something was an ODPIC fix. That really means that that was just in that layer of code. There was probably no Python CX Oracle changes specifically for that kind of free fix. And I guess all of those other drivers would have picked it up if they're using that area of functionality. Um, so in our group, we look after these things in the, the blue. And we liaise with the driver maintainers who are looking after some of the other interesting languages out there who are doing a great job with that in their spare time generally, which I just feel so grateful for. Um, I also have some responsibility for those proprietary drivers listed down at the bottom. Um, and that's uh, quite a big task, as you can imagine. So today, we're going to focus on the CX Oracle driver. And we will start with a little bit of Office Hours overview. So if you're not familiar with that, there's a chat session. Um, I think if Anthony will probably just type a message in there briefly. So you can either chat with us or talk with us. This is really a session designed for you to ask us questions. Uh, the icebreaker theme this month is going to be talking about the CX Oracle 7.1 release, which came out recently. But let's go into that icebreaker, and then you can ask questions later. OK, so stuff. So CX Oracle 7.1 came out, latest, greatest release, as always, with a bunch of new features, a lot of incremental changes and small fixes, which you can see in the release notes. Um, there are a couple of, of bigger changes. One, which will be just a you know, thing which just works, quote unquote, is that if you have an XML type column, it will now be returned to you in a query when you query that column as a string. Unfortunately, it's limited to the varchar two lengths. So it'll be the 4,000 characters or the 32K, depending on what your extended string semantics are in the database. Um, that's just a limitation which we can't work around at the moment. Um, you do have other alternatives to, to fetching XML type, but if you just do a straight select column, you're going to get it back as a string. So it'll just kind of work for you as, as you want. Um, the other two things we are going to talk about a little bit more, number handling improvements and connection pool session state callback. You can see I've got a blog link there, um, so that's where you can go and get more information after this session if I haven't answered everything. Um, but let's look, have a look at the number handling improvements. And Anthony, you were going to talk about those a little bit? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there were a number of issues that have um, come up over the past years regarding uh, how numbers are handled. Uh, the first one is that Python 2 and Python 3 don't behave the same way. <clears throat> uh, in Python 3, integers are and longs have now been merged into one. And so what would happen in the past is that with Python 2, if the number was less than a 32-bit number, then it would work fine. And if it was higher than that, depending on what platform you were on, you would get other uh, things. You might not get an integer at all. You might get a floating point. So this was all uh, cleaned up. And the other point is you can now use integers, floating point, and decimal numbers 
interchangeably in cursor.executeMany before you had to use all integers or all floating point or all decimals. And then finally, um, precision. Right now, the Oracle numbers are capable of storing values that are larger than can be stored in 64-bit uh, floating point numbers. And especially integers, integers can go up, up to 38 digits, whereas uh, floating point can only go up to about 15 or 16. So if that is detected, then a decimal number is returned instead in order to make sure no uh, precision is lost. Cool, thank you. We can take questions on that later. So let's go into the connection pooling and the tagging in the session. Yeah, let me get that straight. It's early in the morning here in, in Australia. Uh, the session tagging uh, uh, enhancement for 7.1. So just a quick refresher on connection pooling, which hopefully you're using if you've got a bigger application, uh, multi-threaded application, you're handling a lot of users, you'll probably be using session pooling just for performance benefits. It's so obviously a pool you can see there on the, the right in the little blue dots. In the Python space, you have a pool of connections and they just hold a, you know, a pipe open to the database. The database has some session memory, etc. And the pool is a pool, so it grows and shrinks. And being a pool, you take a connection from that pool, use it, and then put it back in the pool. So you can do a, a close to push it back in the pool. Now, a lot of code that you see, especially coming from Anthony, doesn't have the close. Um, because there's an automatic close at the end of scopes. Anthony keeps his scopes quite short and just lets the driver, CX Oracle, do the, the closing of resources as necessary. But everybody else in the database land likes doing explicit closes. So uh, choose whichever one works for you. Um, there's also a possibility of doing a pool.drop. And that really means just get rid of it altogether from the pool. So you know, one of those blue dots would disappear if you did a, a pool.drop on, on one of those connections. And you might do that in some rare cases. Um, if you think the connection's playing up or you've done something strange with it, um, you've done something strange with a session state, which I'll explain in a minute. If you've got some complex session state, you don't want to be reused. So it's a, a reusable resource which can grow and shrink on demand. And here I've obviously set the min and the maximum to one and four. So you, when the pool gets created, it will have one connection in steady state use under high load. It would have a maximum of, of four connections in the pool. Okay, so session state. So a lot of applications do set session state. There could be PL SQL package state. There could be these alter session commands, which you probably have used to set things like date formats, time zones. Um, and for all practical purposes, if you look at Oracle documentation, you'll see the word session used quite a lot, and then you see connection. Um, in, in Python land and CX Oracle land, session and connection are, are the same thing. So just mentally translate in your head if you hear me say one into the whichever you're you're familiar with. So that that state, that connection state is going to be retained when that connection is pushed back into the pool. And the next person who doesn't acquire pool.acquire to get a connection out and gets that reused, that already used connection, will get that same session state that was previously set in it. However, that's not Guaranteed, the pool can grow and shrink and connections can be dropped as you saw before or killed if somebody's killed a network or there's a timeout. So you can't actually guarantee you're going to get back any particular connection with any particular state. So typically anybody using a connection pool has to run those alter session commands to reset that state every time they do a pool.acquire command. And that could be a little bit um, slower than you, you might think, a little bit less optimal. Um, because it does what we call a round trip. It does a, a request to the database. It wakes up the network listener. The listener has to hand it off to the database. The message has to come back that it's successful. Yeah, so we call that a round trip. And, and one of the optimization goals in driver land is to reduce the number of round trips. Obviously, things like your SQL stable performance might have a, a big impact too. But in terms of scalability across networks and, and overall ultimate scalability, you want to reduce those round trips. Uh, in 7.1, as you've all read ahead, we have a new session callback mode option, which can be used to improve that scalability. So in red here, you can see the session callback. We now pass it the function name, and we obviously have to create that function. And this function can set any particular state on the connection that it likes. 
uh, ignore the request of tag that's not used in this particular example. I'll, I'll come back to that. So you, you would use this kind of model if you wanted all of the connections from the pool to have the same state. If you wanted them all to have in this example, the time zone of UTC, you'd use this model, very simple model. So we do this pool.acquire call and the underlying session pool. So Oracle uses a, a session pool underneath in that, that C layer I talked about earlier. That selects a connection in the pool or may have to create one if the pool has to grow. And that either has one of two states. It's been used before, it hasn't been used before. If it's brand new, hasn't been used before, then before the acquire returns, this init session method function is going to be called and you can alter the session state on that connection. When init session has returned, then pool.acquire will return. So at this stage of the cursor.execute, you can guarantee with this, with this example that the session will have the time zone set to UTC. And in terms of the application code, which you know, is a slower block, you don't even need to worry about it. It's just going to be a, a given. The other mode e for the pool.acquire for the session pool is that the connection has already been used once. So somebody's already already used it, run something on it, and then released it back to the pool. And in this case, the init session function is not called. So we don't have to redo that all the session statement. So you don't have the overhead of that round trip going backwards and forwards. And you, you may have extra execute commands in there. So it might be more than one round trip, um, but you don't get that overhead in this case. So it's in a very efficient way of setting session state. When you think about it, um, what really happens in, in this sort of little dummy example, pretend you have a little service, web service, microservice, and you're going to call that service a thousand times, and your pool is, um, the, the maximum there in the pool is four. So you've got four sessions maximum. In 7.1, you've got to do that alter session command, alter session call every time you do a acquire, and then you do your application query, which in this case is one select statement. So if you look at this top line in 7.0, you're going to have to do 2,000 statement executions, 1,000 alters, 1,000 selects. But in 7.1, with this new session callback, you only have to do the alter session once for every new connection in the pool. If you only have four connections in the pool, you know, assuming steady state, you know, nothing's grown, shrunk, etc., you're going to call and execute that alter session just four times once per connection in the pool. So you've actually halved the number of statement executions that you've done, which can be a significant benefit. So a tip for, for this mode, when you want all connections to have the same state, in fact, it's, it's, it works in all cases, is try and do little amount of work, little as few round trips to the database as possible. So here you can see I'm actually setting two session attributes in the one session command, so that's a, a win already. And then if I had other alter or other statements, other, other SQL, you know, logging statements, whatever else you want to have in here, um, if you wrap them up in a PL SQL block, this is just one execute, so it's one round trip to the database. So that's just a, a little tip, try and, try and reuse PL SQL where possible. So another scenario that you might have, especially with bigger applications, is that you might need connections with different states. You might need them in different time zones if your users are scattered around the world. Um, different languages, perhaps. So this is where tagging comes in. So CX Oracle has had tagging in the past, but it really comes into play now with the session callback method. So again, you have your, uh, I haven't shown it here, but you have your creation for the pool and you set your callback to the init session, the, the one we had before. And skipping down, when you actually do your acquire, you pass it a tag in, and this is a a equals B, semicolon C equals D kind of format that we, we recommend you use and need to, you need to use if you're using the, the recent versions of Oracle. Kind of arbitrary values for the A and the B. Um, so I call this like a semi-arbitrary semi tag format because it has to be the A equals B format, but the A and B can be anything. Your, your key and value can be anything, any string. Um, and this is going to go to the pool and say, hey, I want a session in the pool, connection in the pool, which has had this tag. So every connection in the pool has a tag. And we have this new attribute con.tag where you can you can show the current tag or, or set the current tag on the connection. And just like before, if you've asked for a particular connection and, and you say I want a connection which just has this tag and there is no connection in the pool which has that tag, then init session is going to be called. 
obviously the first time you do a pool.acquire, nothing in the pool has this tag. So init session is always going to be called. And in that case, the connection tag will be an empty string. Requested tag will be the value you requested. You can do some parsing, which I haven't shown here. So you can you know, parse this, split it up into the A equals B syntax, decide what you want to do, what you want to set, what you want to ignore, do your alter session statements, and then update the tag to be what you want, which typically will be what you requested. May not be in some cases because you connections could have extra session state, which you don't care about, um, but you want to retain because somebody else might want it in the future. So scenario three is actually a sort of a slight variant, and that's when you're using the database resident connection pooling on the database. So you typically do that with session pooling uh, as well, with, and database side with DRCP. So you have both enabled at the same time. You don't have to do that, but that's typically the way it's done. Um, and in this case, instead of setting the callback to be the name of a, or not the name, but setting it to a Python function, you actually pass it as a string. So the difference was quotes or no quotes. The other examples didn't have the quotes. Here, this is the name of a, you know, a PL SQL procedure, which has this particular method, you know, the requested tag and the actual tag as, as you'd expect. And uh, can obviously be a you know, package.procedure if you want or user.package.procedure. There's, there's a slight advantage to this. It's a little bit hard to explain in, in diagrams. I won't bore you with too much with, but because the, the management is done on the database side with the, the connection pooling, the DRCP, there's no round trips to actually call that PLC call. It, there's nothing going from Python to the database backwards and forwards if you're using DRCP. Um, compare that with uh, the Python callbacks. And as I mentioned before, you know, the number of execute calls you got, each of those is going to be a round trip. So you could need at least one round trip if you're going to change any state in that a Python based callback. You don't have to use DRCP to use the PL SQL callback, but you still need one round trip from the from Python if you if you don't have DRCP. A little bit of a subtlety. The kind of takeaway from this is that Oracle is going to try and do its best to give you a connection which has already got the tag that you want. And if it can't, then your callback is going to be called and it's up to you to parse the, the state and decide what you want to set and set that state. And then overall, that's going to give you greater efficiencies because your callback's not going to be called uh, as many times as if you had to do it manually yourself after every acquire call. So that's just a little bit of an overview. There's a little bit more in the blog post that uh, I'll, I'll give you the links to my blog site again. And now, in all reality, it's over to you. And so if anybody wants to unmute themselves or type something in the, the chat window, we're open here for questions and can talk about any particular topic you like to the best of our ability. So I'll just uh, give you a few minutes to type and unmute if you like. I see uh, um, got a few people online. Are there any questions? We're certainly available if you do want to talk to us offline. You can send us email, contact us on the Python GitHub CX Oracle issues list. The link's there on the screen. I guess we should probably mention what we're going to have a minor patch release come out sometime this week, uh, today or tomorrow, just a couple of bug fixes there of things we found. And so look out for that coming to you soon. Uh, I think particularly just some continuous query notification fixes have gone in for so some high volume users. So just get that stability patch out. And that'll be a 7.1.1, I guess. Yes. Well, thank you everyone for attending the office hours this month. Look forward to chatting with you next month. And please feel free to contact us if you do have any questions in the meantime. Thank you very much.